All right, we haven't even passed into Genesis 1-3 yet. There's so much controversy over properly interpreting it, so much insertion and editorializing of it. We have to explain it before we move on to compare this in Genesis chapter 1 with Genesis chapter 2 to see if there is or is not a contradiction. Again, it's find out your first subject that you're comparing with, study it, and then look at your second subject, study it, compare the two. They, they dis disagree or contradict one another. So the doctrines of Scripture refute the possibility of what we call the gap theory. <clears throat> the fact is that they, in the beginning God creates the heaven. In the, in the, let's take a look at it again. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When we go to chapter 2, <clears throat> take a look at chapter 2. Well, let's take a look at it over here. It's going to take a while to look for it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, we have a momentary gap of time, people think. Actually, it's, it's not necessarily a gap in time at all. Here we go. All right, Genesis. Genesis chapter... One, one. Let's make this big and bigger. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. New American Standard Bible. <clears throat> then, between one and two, verses one and two, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surfaces of the wa surface of the waters. Between one and two, people proposed billions of years. Really? So. Verse 2 is no longer the beginning. There's a panoramic view here, like the opening up a movie, a big western, and you're looking at a bunch of riders riding across a big, huge, gorgeous canyon, sunset, the mountains, the desert, the flats, the rocks, the green, the trees, the, the, and the sand color, and all of a sudden, this is billions of years go by. We're just looking at the panoramic version, vision. The artist is God has painted, uh, the created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> and what about the earth? Well, the earth was formless and void at that time, not 15 billion years later. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. Okay, we've gotten to the formless and void part. And we don't see any reason to in interject anything other than this is the panoramic viewpoint. The cameras are open on this western. The cameras are open on God creating the heavens and earth. And guess what? We will be there in the recreation, the new heavens and the new earth. And we'll see how it was done. And we won't see billions of years of deterioration and catastrophe, the devil doing his work. We won't see that. So, and he's going to do it the same way he did it before. There's not going to be any new devil that's going to cause devastation and sin to enter into the world. So let's take a look again. <clears throat> The doctrines of Scripture refute the possibility of this, what we just described, called the gap theory. Genesis 1.28 commands man to multiply and fill the earth, not replenish what had previously been there. Oh, yeah, the, the, the devastation, because we had look at the dinosaurs and, and, and mankind and caveman. Oh, they all got destroyed and so on and so forth. Genesis 1.27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Sounds like a first-time deal. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Is this not? Is this God's second attempt? The first one failed? The first command given to this first man or woman, it's not, not a second or third or second millionth. The first command given to this first man and woman was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The King James translation used the, the term replenish, but this does not suggest the idea of refilling either the Old English term itself or the Hebrew word from which it is translated. The, term, the Hebrew word is M-A-L-E, male, and means simply fill or fulfill or be filled. It doesn't say replenish. People focus on that word. That's a really a bad translation, even in King James English. Of the more than 300 times it is used, it is translated in King James Version by replenish only seven times. 
And even these could be as well have been rendered fill. Fill the earth, humans. It is certainly erroneous to use this one verse as a proof text for the gap theory as many have done. The earth was created, point two, specifically for man. <clears throat> so before man was created in this form, God made a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to recreate it for you. I meant to create it for you and I forgot. God didn't do that. Scripture indicates that the earth was created as man's dominion <clears throat> and for his good pleasure. So there's a question as to why there might have been an, uh, an earth created long before man. <laughs> question. Genesis 1.26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. But they came before he did. And, and he was supposed to be responsible for them. What happened? Yeah, you messed up, God. You got things out of order. Compare Hebrews 2, 5 to 8. It is not to angels that he has subjected, God subjected to the, the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you are care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. <clears throat> you crowned him with our glory and honor and put everything under his feet. Does that sound like a mistake? Or anticipating a mistake and had to do it over again? In putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. Something's amiss, amiss. So, Scripture indicates that it is not to angels that God gave the world, but to man. So why will he let the angelic beings take it over before? Compare Isaiah 45, 18. For this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He was, and he who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. <clears throat> he did not create it created to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He made a mistake. That's empty. I forgot. He says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Here God states that he did not create the earth to be empty. That's just the beginning stages. In the beginning, and the earth was form and void. So there is a question as to how then the earth could be permitted to be empty for ages without man to inhabit it, if that gap theory is true, and it's not. And God's word states that the world was specifically created as man's inheritance. <clears throat> Matthew 25:34. Then the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom of the earth, prepared for you since the creation of the world. Prepared for you since the creation of the world. Prepared for mankind since the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. Therefore, there could be a question as to the purpose for the creation of the earth, permitting it to deteriorate into a chaotic and voided condition, and then eons later recreating the earth and subsequently creating man for whom the earth was created in the first place. Backwards. Is a God a backwards God? Since the chaotic and dying conditions of today's creation was a result of Adam's fall, the earth before Adam would not have been that way. If, de if death existed on the earth millions of years before Adam was created, especially in the form of animals living and dying, then God's word that Adam or Adam's original sin brought death to the universe is untrue. Another mistake? Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death entered the world through sin. Wait a minute. The one man, Adam, wasn't there when all this went, went to chaotic. No, that's not true. And in this way, death came to all men because all sin. Note that the death of all things, not just of mankind, has been here since the phrase, and death, is connected grammatically to the previous clause, entered the world. Thus we have, just as sin entered the world, death entered the world through sin. <clears throat> this could not simply be the death of mankind, since there is no specific limiting qualifier appearing in the verse to limit death to mankind only. Furthermore, if there were such a qualifier, furthermore, if there was such a qualifier, where am I? Then the verse would deteriorate into redundancy and become nonsensical as follows. Just as sin entered the world through one man, and the death of all men entered the world through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sin. That phrase. Well, of course death came to all men when the death of all men entered the world. This rendering becomes redundant and nonsensical. One therefore must conclude that death in this verse refers to the death of all living things and not just mankind. So compare 1 Corinthians 15:21. For since death came through a man, Adam, the res resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Jesus Christ. 
And what purpose would it serve to have creation reflect the lost condition of man before Adam and Eve were even created, much less lost? There's so-called the gap theory. Compare Romans 8, 19-22. The creation waits in their eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the sure hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Man was responsible for the way creation is today, and uh, that was caused by man's sin. There wasn't uh, any destruction of the, the world, the planet Earth, before man was even created. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who are the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our, our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. That's the final adoption and redemption of our bodies into uh, resurrection, perfect resurrection bodies, just like the Lord's. Note that verse 21 says that all of creation is under a bondage of decay, and that which results from death of plants and animals. So one may conclude here that decay and death are not in God's perfect order of things. So it couldn't have been in the beginning that way. Thus, decay and death could not have been part of God's original creation, which he declared as very good. Oh, eh, he's kind of uh, exaggerating. Rather, it came about as a result of Adam's sin in the garden and not before. So as believers await the redemption of their bodies, 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 49, so the whole of creation which reflects the sinful condition of man via decay and death also awaits its redemption into the new heavens and the new earth. 2 Peter 3.13 and Revelation 21.1. I'm going to take a look at that. 2 Peter 3.13. Well, we have it open here. 2 Peter 3.13. What great resources I have lately. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And what was the other one? Revelation 21.1. It's nice to find corroboration, when, especially when you're trying to refute a point that's 21.1, not true. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the earth, first earth passed away, and there's no longer any sea. We're looking at men back in the first century that knew the scriptures very, very closely. The Lord Jesus Christ was amongst them. The earth created one time recently then. So Revelation 21.1, not ages and ages ago, billions of years, and then destroyed, and then God had to recreate it then. There's, a new, there's not a second new one, earth, that's going to be recreated in the future. There's only a first earth we're looking at now, and then a new heavens and a new earth from there. God didn't have to keep on trying. Revelation 21.1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Notice that the first heaven and the first earth passed away in Revelation 21.1 thousands of years after Adam and Eve was created. Strongly indicated that God created the heavens and the earth only one time before this and did not recreate it again before Revelation 21.1. He didn't need a new box of crayons. Come on. Other passages strongly indicate that God created the heavens and the earth and all life forms therein, including man, in a total of six days and then rested. So look at Genesis 2.1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in their vast array. Where's that looking? Backwards. We've just read through Genesis chapter 1 to the end. And then, and then it says, in, actually these uh, chapter headings uh, should be placed in a different place because they have three verses here that belong reflecting upon Genesis chapter 1. Then in, in Genesis chapter 3, let's take a look at that. Then we move on to Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. So Genesis, Genesis 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their hosts. By the seventh day God completed its work which he had done, looking back, not forward, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done, looking back. <clears throat> then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it, in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. We're still looking at Genesis chapter 1. And then, verse 4, This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. Okay, actually verse 4, looking back. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. 
What are you looking at? Back to verse chapter 1 to the end. Now, 